Alright, hello. Um, we're gonna cover short stack strategy on this little video. Um, made a little PowerPoint for you guys. So basically, I'm gonna go over what exactly short stack strategy is, and then we'll go into how you would implement it. First of all, I don't really like short stack strategy. It's probably the most annoying thing in poker. When you're sitting at a cash game and you have like a full buy-in and half the table is short stacking, it really sucks. But the good part about it is it's really unexploitable and it's really hard to mess up. So this will make you money for sure. So basically, you want to use this in cash games and you would buy in for 20% of the maximum amount. So if you're playing $100 for the maximum buy-in, you'd buy in for 20 And uh, when you're playing this kind of game, you want to look for big stacks. The worst thing for you would be a bunch of other short stacks because you you it just wouldn't be a profitable position for you. All right, so we're going to go with pre-flop. Um, you never want to call when you're when you're doing this whole short stack system thing. You only have two options, and that's raising and shoving all in. And we'll cover when to shove and when to raise all in, or when to shove and when to raise later. But uh, I just want to go over position again real fast because we're going to hit on some positional topics. Um, you have the button and the two blinds, and then the first three slots after that would be early position. The next two or three would be middle, and the next two would be late. All right, so let's get into raising. All right, if you're going to raise, you got to raise to four times the big blind. So if the, the blind was 10 cents, you'd raise to 40, and you'd add one for every limper in front of you. So if the blind was 10 cents, you'd make it 50 if there was one limper in front of you. And if someone raises in before you, you just go all in. Um, all right, so hand selection for this kind of strategy. You're going to play really extremely, extremely tight. The tightest poker you can play. It's going to be really boring. You're going to hate this style of poker, but it's going to make you money. And that's what counts in the long run. So we're going we're going to go with hand selection and uh, situation one, which would be no one raises in front of you. And uh, when no one raises in front of you, you can play the uh, the loosest of the whole strategy, which is not very loose. It's pretty tight. So from early position, which is the first three slots, you're going to play jacks are better, jack jack, queen queen, king king. Ace King. I didn't throw aces on here, but that should probably be a no-brainer. Um, middle position. You do all your early hand ranges, plus pocket nines, plus pocket tens. You don't really open up too much in middle position. Then from the blinds and late position, you can play your early range, your middle range, sevens, eights, king jack, ace, ace jack, ace queen. So some of you are probably saying like, what, what about what about ace ace ten? What about king jack? Those hands suck, so we're not going to play them. Alright, so situation two, this is going to be when someone raises in front of you, and you're going to play even tighter than situation one. And basically, if you don't have a premium hand, which would be jacks are better, basically, you're, you're not going to play. And the only way you're going to play is you're going to shove all in. You're not going to call a raise ever. You're just going to shove it in there. All right, so against one raise, you're gonna you you can you can profitably shove in Jack Jack Queen Queen King King Ace Ace or Ace King, which is exactly your early range. So against one raise, you can shove in your early range. If there are two raises in front of you, like a raise and a re-raise, there are only two hands you're gonna play, and that's kings and that's aces. Um, really, really not much to touch on that, just because. You're probably dead if you don't have kings or aces when you're on the short stack. <laughs> anyway, if it's uh, if you raise and it gets re-raised behind you, you can uh, shove in. Tens are better. Tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, king. All right. So on the flop, if you make it to the flop, say you raise, you get one call. All right. So usually you should probably have an overpair about I don't know, 70% of the time. And if you have an overpair, you're just gonna bet out strong. You're not you're not gonna slow play anything. Um, if anybody re-raises you, you're just gonna go all in. Um, if someone bets at you, you're gonna go all in with any pair or overpair. Um, if you hit a draw and you didn't raise preflop, like you were sitting in the blinds and you uh, 
you didn't raise at all, but you hit like a flush draw, you're just gonna check and fold it. If you can get a free card, you can get a free card, but if you didn't raise pre-flop, there's not enough money in the pot for you to to follow through on this draw, and it's it's just not worth it using this kind of system. However, if you did raise pre-flop and you, you catch a, a draw, just play it strong like you would if you had a pair or an over pair. You'd bet right out, you'd re-raise all in, you'd get all your money in there. Alright, now betting, um, if you're going to bet after raising, you'd want to bet two-thirds of the pot. Um, and if this is more than a half your stack, you would just shove it in there. Um, that's about it for flop play. Um, this is just a quick little slide. Do not bluff. Bluffing on a short stack is just totally asking for trouble. No point to it. People are going to call you down. You don't have enough money to make these kind of moves. So just ingrain that in your mind. We're not going to be bluffing here. Uh, so for your game selection, you want to have at least 30 buy-ins for your limit. So if it was 5 cent, 10 cent, you need like 60 bucks. Uh, you, you of course want to look for those big stacks when you're playing this kind of strategy because those are the people that are going to pay you off. You're not going to make money against other short stacks. Alright, so that was the boring part. That was the lecture type part. We're going to go ahead and end that slideshow, get rid of that. Now we're going to get into some actual gameplay of me showing you this strategy. Way more exciting. So I'm sitting at a 10 cent, 25 cent table. And the max buy-in would be $25, so I'm going to buy in for $5. Um, and also another point of the strategy is if you make more than like 50 big blinds, or like 100 big blinds, like right now we have, uh, we only have 8, 12, we only have like... 20 big blinds. So if you get up to like 50 big blinds, 100 big blinds, you should probably just get out and and move on to another table and try this. Um, this kind of strategy works best when you're multi-tabling. Like if you can play like six different tables at once, playing this short stack strategy, you'll definitely make money. Um, I just think that's kind of confusing for uh, for video purposes. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pause it for now until we catch a hand but just know I'll probably be folding like every hand for a while uh, go ahead and pause it alright so this is still my first hand and I ended up hitting top pair so we're just going to go ahead and bet two thirds a pot which is probably not 45 but whatever we're just gonna bet basically pot here Alright, we'll make some quick chips there. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and pause again. I just want to, oh wait, Ace Ten. This is this is the danger hand. It looks really good, but it's it's not going to be as profitable to play. Um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and auto fold this, as shocked as most of you will probably will be. But just on a short stack, and especially against a raise, an all in, and a call, like there's no need to play that hand. But anyway, pause it up. All right, finally, after 18 hands of folding, we pick up Ace King on the uh, the big blind. Ooh, we have a raise. Well, now re-raising here would be okay, but I don't think it's the best play because we're way out of position. We're gonna be in a bad spot, so I'm just gonna go ahead and ship it right here. I don't really care to play this hand short stacked out of position, so I'm just gonna go ahead and ship it. Nope, we got the call. And he's got aces. Well, and he's got heart. So, whatever. We're drawing dead. That's the kind of sucks. Kind of unfortunate. He picked up aces in late position. Well, go ahead and uh, min by again. But. Let's take a look at that hand again. I mean.